So how do we make a prompt that is so complex like this with all of its defining characteristics as mentioned within the words that I've highlighted into a simplistic way of creating results like this poster here. So before we dive in, this is gonna be a bit of a long and dense one, so feel free to pause it, come back to it in installments. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. How do you do that? Well, it comes down to knowing frame. Now, this is an acronym that I've come up specifically for Mid Journey version six, and it breaks down into the following categories here, starting with focus and shot. So here you wanna mention the main character or object and their action, angle, and shot type. Then you wanna define the resolution, so specify the camera type and lens to mimic film quality. Then set the ambience, so set the scene's location and time. Then mood and palette, outline the overall mood and color scheme, and then anything extras that would add to the specific scene in question, so what the characters wear in, as indicated here by like wardrobe, props, anything in the background or anything that the character is interacting with, and then specific text like within movie titles you'd write it in capitals there which I'm going to show you shortly. But prior to going through all of these one by one, we have to understand a little bit about cinematic theory and photographic knowledge. I'm going to delve into it a little bit in this guide, but I'm also then going to link the particular resources that would be very helpful at the end of this guide that you can access. So let's get into it. So the first part is focus and shot. Here we want to mention the main character or object and their action, angle and shot type. So we go to different camera angles. You get low angle, high angle, Dutch angle, overhead shot, eye level and shoulder level. So low angle is meant to signify that the camera is pointing upwards and therefore the subject is seen in a more authoritative way. And high angle is the opposite where the camera is pointing down and the subject is made to feel small and inferior. Dutch angle is interesting because that adds a sense of of dizziness and unease famously used actually in Mission Impossible so Mission Impossible Dutch angle so like that look I remember that scene Bishai tank scene in the first Mission Impossible that was used there to create a sense of dizziness and unease so that's Dutch angle and then you get overhead shot so this is used to drive home the land in which the specific subject is placed in and the vastness as well that you can create so that's overhead shot then you get eye level which is more like conversational so like if you and I was speaking right now it would be best if I didn't have this slightly up like I've got it right now but I actually had it at eye level so that's eye level and then shoulder level which is just like shoulder and above hopefully you get the point there when it comes to focus and shot now resolution is specifying the camera type and lens to mimic film quality different movies feature different camera types as well as lens types and the way that you find that is you go to the film in question on IMDB so the matrix go up here cast and crew click on that then you click on technical specs on the right hand column and then you see here all of your information that you need camera Ariflex 435 as well as the lens that was used yeah so the Panavision Primo lens and you can second that information by going on shot on what.com and then typing within here within the search titles the matrix it will come up and it will feature of course all of the relevant information that you would need so camera Ari 435 camera as well as the specific lens there Panavision lenses right so the Panavision Primo lens which is what it gave within IMDB but this this is near enough the same if not the same information that's listed on shot on what it's always great to reference two specific websites imdb as well as shot on what to ensure that what information you're seeing is the correct information for you to then include within your prompts which i'll get to shortly so then comes ambience which is setting the scenes location and time so if i go down you'll be able to see the examples that are used here to demonstrate this point the setting and time make a key difference so cinematic 35 millimeter film still of a 19 70s New York during the day aspect ratio of 21 by 9 and I'll get into the setting shortly once I go through what I've gone through but you see that's completely different to down here a futuristic city in 2050 at night time completely different worlds apart in terms of the results there that you're seeing then you get the mood and palette dystopic dark gritty or happy and the color scheme along with that to reflect it and then lastly the wardrobe props and specific text like I mentioned before written in capitals there that can really add to the scene now a little bit about about each of these aspects in terms of their reasoning then why do we include all of these aspects in our prompts why can't we have a more shorter prompt to get the result that we want well the reason being is because firstly for focus and shot it determines the central subject of your poster so this is key right otherwise you're leaving it completely up to mid journey to create what it wants to create as well as like whether it's a man woman whatever they're doing that's all left open to interpretation if you don't mention what the central subject of your poster or cinematic still 
is involved in what they're doing, okay? And then knowledge of different cameras and lenses, it really helps in creating a unique aesthetic. And then ambience, of course, setting the time of day, which can influence the mood and context of the scene, so it's crucial for setting the right tone. Mood and palette is the emotional feel and color scheme of the poster. So understanding color theory here, like what colors go well together, what I find to be helpful, actually, is just looking up a specific film and then seeing the color scheme. So like if we go Inception, for instance, there's questions that people ask, for instance, so what is the color palette of Inception? And then so we will use this information within our prompts, as you'll see later on of me doing with a prompt of Leonardo DiCaprio. Warm oranges and browns, or you can use bright whites and gray, and then put the word color scheme at the end, and that's how you make it work. Costumes and props, mentioned that before. Adding that in can really add depth and dimension to your particular cinematic still or movie poster. So now these are the settings that are used. So style raw, this is a really important setting to utilize for Mid Journey version six, in that it allows for as much of an authentic look as possible. It pretty much replicates real life and there's no need to put words like you used to be able to get away with putting for version five and version 5.1 and two of ultra realistic 4K or high definition. You simply have to have this option selected, which is raw mode and it will do a tremendous job there. And then style medium. So this is the default value of what is to be included within your prompt when you create it. And this is also signified numerically by dash dash S100. Now, if you go down on that particular scale, you're having more control over your particular prompt in terms of what you type in. But as you go up, then Mid Journey does its own thing and it adds its own aesthetic that's specifically tailored to version six. Remix mode allows you when you've got that turned on and you click this particular icon here, it allows you to change your prompt. So you can click that and make some changes to your prompt. When you add dash dash no to a specific image, it'll get rid of that part of the image and re-render it. And then high and low variation mode. If you go like low variation mode and you go very strong, for instance, it's not going to be as much than if you have high variation mode selected and then you go very strong. It's going to be much more. And these very subtle and very strong options happen when you have a prompt generated and then you can see that there's very subtle and very strong there. Turbo mode is the quickest to generate, but it costs the most GPU hours. So it's quite costly in the long run. Otherwise you can have fast and relax mode and that won't really affect the quality of the image. Not that I have seen anyway. And it can be fine just as well. It just takes longer, of course. So first, as part of the focus and shot portion of the acronym, Oscar Schindler, the main character, contemplative close-up shot, resolution, black and white film quality, shot with an Arriflex 35BL camera, ambience, war-torn crackle, mood and palette, monochromatic, somber, extras, Schindler's attire, Schindler's list in a classic font. Okay, so it's got classic font, Schindler's list there. It's not quite movie type-esque, like a movie poster, like traditional, but it's still done a fairly good job. I think the graininess is incredible and the little bit of the scratch there like gives it such an authentic feel it's unreal now good fellas this is definitely by far the best i think so focus and shot henry hill medium shot kind of looks like him a little bit as well smirking he's not smirking unfortunately a resolution gritty 35 millimeter film still or film style and ambience 60s to 70s new york city mood and a palette dark urban colors and extras vintage suit which he's wearing and then good fellas title in bold classic font which has done a tremendous job of so once you do this when you prompt him you're just writing out a sentence so this is like you're planning before you actually prompt so it comes out smoothly next film is Shawshank Redemption then so this is like focusing shot Andy Dufresne hopeful medium shot don't know if he looks hopeful there or if he looks more agitated and annoyed resolution rich color palette in the style of 35 millimeters ambience inside Shawshank prison mood and palette earthy tones and then extras prison uniform the Shawshank Redemption title written in bold font so please note it doesn't do well at this stage with more than two words mentioned I did try to do of course more than two words which is what this title is is three words the Shawshank Redemption and then it just basically like if I just uncrop that now you'll see that it had three words there the reddish shank redemption and then yeah Shawshank Redemption there so I just cropped it out and then Apollo 13 so again it's part of the planning phase so focus and shot astronauts and spacecraft medium shot resolution and Ariflex 35 3 with a Panavision Primo lens ambience inside Apollo 13 spacecraft mood and palette cool metallics and blues it does um color schemes very very, very well, picks it up tremendously well. Extra spacesuits, Apollo 13 title written in a technical font. It's not really technical font, I would say, but it's still written it nonetheless. So now getting into focus and shot then. So focus is key in directing the viewer's attention and shaping the narrative. There are two primary types of focus, shallow and deep. So when I do that, you will see that around my hand, it's very blurry, right? And that's called a shallow depth of field. And that's also indicated within this image here. You can see in the background of this woman, it's very 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 blurred but the foreground is where the subject
subject is and where the woman is. If I zoom in a little bit more, you can see it's really, really in focus there, her hoodie of what she's wearing. So that's the difference there between shallow focus and then deep depth of focus is different. So we've got an image here of a really beautiful mountainous landscape and everything is in focus here. There's no blurriness to this image at all. And if you want to make sure that you have deep depth of focus within your image, you can simply type dash dash no blur. That will, from what I have found anyway, get rid of any blurriness within your images so you can have it just right to your liking. Now the choice of between shallow and deep depth of focus can significantly alter a film's narrative, either by creating a sense of intimacy or providing a broader context within the scene. Now shot types here, so as a rule of thumb, the closer the camera is to the subject, the more emotion it is that we as viewers feel. This is referred to as subjective in the world of cinema. Objective achieves the opposite effect and makes us feel like we're the observers of the characters shown on screen. Okay, so this is just to kind of illustrate a little bit. So I'm going to show you now a little bit what that means. So that's like an extreme close-up shot and this would be like a close close-up shot, right? So it's like shoulder level up basically as indicated here. And then you've got medium close-up shot there of like Liam Neeson there. Cowboy shot, so that's like classic from Fight Club there. Medium full shot, medium long shot basically is that. And then finally you've got the full shot. That's the full shot there where it shows the whole subject in the frame completely. So that's the full shot. So now on to resolution then. So let's explore the different digital and film cameras and as well as the prompts. So Ari Alexa XT was used within John Wick and it's known for its exceptional image quality and color accuracy. So mentioning Ari Alexa XT in a prompt would yield images of rich detail textures and natural colors. So my prompt was simply a cinematic film still of John Wick looking menacing in a black and white suit, full body shot, didn't do the full body shot part which I'm a little disappointed by, taken with an Ari Alexa XT with a Hawk V light vintage 74 lens, 35 millimeters neon color palette. It did everything else but sometimes what you'll find is hit and miss in terms of mentioning the shot type or the camera angles. Sometimes they'll work and sometimes they won't. Unfortunately, Mid Journey still requires a lot of attempts to get the results that you want. So although this is like a definitive way of from what I found that works most of the time, like 70 to 80% of the time, if you follow this particular method of frame, you'll get very amazing results. But I still find that you need to do it again and again to really start hitting consistency there. And then Red Epic Dragon. Now this is a different type of camera and it was used in The Martian. So using Red Epic Dragon can yield results that are very, very high definition as well as have very vivid colors. So this was my prompt there. So a cinematic film still of an astronaut on Mars looking in wonder, extreme long shot. So this time it did do extreme long shot, right? Because it's shown the whole subject there in the frame and you've got so much of an expanse on it, right? So there's so much depth of field there. There's a shallow depth of field, but there's a lot of depth to the image. There's the foreground there, and there's the middle portion there, and then there's mountainous gapes right at the back there. So it's really, really done a tremendous job if you ask me. So this was the prompt for that then. A cinematic film still of an astronaut on Mars looking in wonder, extreme long shot, taken with a red epic dragon camera and a Canon lens, 16 millimeters vivid color palette. Unfortunately, it didn't do the 16 millimeters. Now, the lower you go on the scale of millimeters within film gauges, the more grainy and gritty it becomes. And what gritty films do tremendously well from a storytelling standpoint is they really like showcase the struggle that a character is going through or the struggle of the particular environment that the character may be within. So it shows real grittiness, a real hardness to it. 35 millimeters is typically what is used within most modern day films. So it's got a tiny bit of graininess to it, but it still looks very, very modern. And you will see that actually within most of these particular prompts that I've used that they are actually 35 millimeters. So that's that there. Then I've used a separate film camera, which is the Auriflex 235. So this is favored for its reliability and cinematic feel used in Inception, including Auriflex 235 and a prompt can add a traditional filmic texture with an organic quality. So you can see if I zoom in, it's got a little bit of grain on the background there. And then his face is super detailed, right? And this is an extreme close-up cinematic still of Leonardo DiCaprio looking in awe based on the film Inception, shot with an Aeroflex 235 camera and a Panavision Primo lens. IMAX 70 millimeters, warm and orange color scheme. 
So they used a variety of different Panavision cameras within the film of Wolf of Wall Street. So this particular camera is known for its versatility and classic Hollywood look, as seen in the Wolf of Wall Street. Mentioned in Panavision Millennium can create images with a timeless cinematic aesthetic. So that, I don't know about you, but that looks in kind of similar likeness to Margot Robbie. I did say a low angle there, and it didn't unfortunately get it right. This is more of a kind of medium shot, I would say. So moving on to lens types then, as we can see, we've got the prime lens. Our prime lenses are fixed, unlike, you know, variable zoom lenses. So this camera right now is a prime lens, whereas this kit lens that came with it here, that was actually a variable zoom lens. So you can zoom it in here. Yeah, what I've got right now is fixed. It's like 13 millimeters prime lens, right? So a Zeiss Master Prime is like that. And what it does is it produces a very crisp image with minimal distortion. So you can see here, there is a little bit of blur. There is, but you can see the back of his particular head is super crisp and it's got some little bit of nice film grain to it as well. So it's like that 35 millimeter look. And now anamorphic lenses. So the particular differences between anamorphic and spherical. So in spherical lenses, it has simpler mechanics and it's sharper image, sharper crisp image, and it has minimal distortion, right? Whereas with an anamorphic lens, there's reduced sharpness and increased distortion. Like if you see on the sides, it's more distorted and it has fall off as well. Fall off meaning that certain parts of the sides, they're distorted there. So that's the differences between anamorphic and spherical. I will leave a link to this particular excellent video in this guide as well, so you can access it. And this has a little bit of a more spherical type of feel, if I'm honest. It doesn't necessarily have a anamorphic feel, but it does definitely look like Brad Pitt from Fight Club, and it's done a tremendous job there. And also another aspect or visual characteristic of anamorphic lenses is that they have a lens streak or a lens flare. This is the difference between what a lens flare would look like between anamorphic and spherical. Anamorphic is more across the board and spherical is just more like tightly concentrated in one area and it's more circular there. That's that. So it's done a tremendous job at capturing the seediness of the particular image as well as like the blood stain on his t-shirt and everything else. Now we get into film types so 35 millimeters as I keep mentioning. This is very much 35 millimeters because it's got that greenish type of look there and you can tell immediately that it's a spherical lens as well because it's got that circular type of look there to it. So this is a spherical type of lens. So standard film type that offers a balance between resolution and texture gives a classic cinematic grain type look as depicted below. Now she's not looking at the camera but she definitely is smiling. So like I said before it's hit and miss sometimes with your prompting and you have to do several repetitions to get the results that you'd want. Now this is a IMAX 70 millimeter film so a much more modern and I used Quantum of Solace as this inspiration to come up with this kind of image. So this is known for its larger frame size leading to incredibly detailed and immersive results. Films like Dunkirk utilized IMAX 70 millimeters for its expansive visuals. So this has done a tremendous job. It's got him as a kind of low angle shot, although I'd, I'd prefer it to be a bit more tilted like that upwards, but it's like tilted it kind of like that a little bit. So it's not quite like that. Obviously the camera would be pointing up like that if it was a low angle shot. It's done more of a kind of that, yeah, angle. So it's not completely low angle, but near enough. So in your mid journey prompt, specifying these cameras, lenses and film types allows you to tailor the visual output. So for instance, prompting with an Arri Alexa XT with a Zeiss Master Prime lens like John Wick could yield high definition color accurate images while Panavision Millennium anamorphic lenses like the Wolf of Wall Street would offer a more modern immersive aesthetic. Now mood and palette, this is interesting. So a combination of color scheme and lighting sets the emotional tone of the image, directly influencing our perception and evoking specific feelings like the suspenseful darkness and vivid neon in Blade Runner 2049 which creates a futuristic uneasy atmosphere. Now I know that it doesn't look like Ryan Gosling exactly and sometimes it does a tremendous job with making sure that it is actually as the particular celebrity appears like but in this case it's not done a tremendous job but what it has done a very good job at is the color scheme it's got a tremendous amount of pinks there and then that's of course seconded by the excellent blues there in contrast so that's good and then the rain falling behind him so now let's get into some movie posters as part of the extras portion and beyond so props outfits and costume design are crucial in setting a film's tone and evoking emotions they help create a sense of authenticity and immerse viewers in the story for instance the character's outfit can signal their personality or mood and time period while unique props can add intrigue or symbolism together these visual elements enrich the storytelling making the cinematic experience more engaging and emotionally resonant there you have it i will include resources of course at the end of it but i hope you've learned something new in this guide if you want me to create more of these types of videos like guides for even other styles then let me know down in the comments below but yeah i hope you found this video valuable and if you have then i really appreciate a like and subscribe that'd be massively appreciated and until next time i've been Vey and peace